Let's begin with how gorgeous jigsaw wallpaper can be for your room. Apart from being rather aesthetic to the eye, they are also relatively inexpensive to purchase. There are many types of jigsaw puzzles. Some jigsaw puzzles are simple with large pieces that are designed for toddlers, as well as some for preschoolers. Some are 3D puzzles that are castles and buildings. More often than not, jigsaws consist of a picture cut up into tiny pieces of different shapes. They can vary in size from just a few pieces to a few thousand. Some people have been known to have their favorite family portrait blown up and made into a jigsaw puzzle. Others make jigsaw puzzles of their favorite movie scene, or of their favorite sport, or even historic location. Welcome to episode 107 of the Teacher Rockstar Podcast, a place where tips and strategies critical to the new teacher are discussed. I'm your host, Steve Hiles, and today's episode, I want to share some thoughts on jigsaw brain games. Okay? Uh, new teacher, this is a great activity for your students to problem solve as well as do some critical thinking. Now, before we continue, here are some messages from our sponsor. Would you like to supercharge your classroom management skills? Well, if you're a brand new teacher with five years or less of teaching experience, if you're a student teacher, perhaps maybe you're a teacher returning back into the classroom after an extended absence, okay? The Teacher Rockstar Academy course is for you. Gain the confidence, the skills you'll need to crush it on day one and beyond. Take advantage of personal coaching, one year of email support, our Facebook community group, the online classroom, and super cool bonuses. So invest in yourself today and enroll now at tra teacherclassroomresources.com. That's tra.teacherclassroomresources.com. My friend, would you like unlimited access to over $1,000 worth of educational resources for less than a small pack of chewing gum a day? And you know what the best part is? You get a free seven-day trial to go and check it out. And after that, it's only $9.99 a month. So really, what do you have to lose? Simply go to membership.teacherclassroomresources.com. You will love being part of this membership community. Okay, let's dive right in. Putting a jigsaw together. Let's talk about that. Putting a jigsaw together can be quite challenging to say the least, but you know something? You could simplify things with just a little bit of planning. The first thing to do is to separate the pieces into inner pieces and outer pieces. Outer pieces have at least one straight side, whereas the inner uh, ones will have four irregular shapes. After separating the pieces, set the inner frame aside and start assembling the outer frame of the puzzle. A little sorting will help here as well. Separate the pieces by color and build from the corners. All right. Then, if you are working on a puzzle with thousands of pieces, for example, it may help to work on it in small segments. Once the frame has been assembled, you will once again need to sort out the pieces. Put similar colors together and look for distinctive features, such as eyes on people and animals or the petals of a flower. You will probably want to work on small sections of each color group at a time. You know, that only really makes sense, okay? And then you may have to reshuffle the pieces several times before you start seeing your puzzle turn back into a picture. You'll need to refer to the master picture on the box often, I'm sure, as this can help you determine where that eye went or which group of clouds goes in what section of the sky. Little things like that. And don't expect to finish your jigsaw puzzle at one sitting. That very rarely ever happens. Some puzzles will take you many days to finish. Some could even take months. It's even better if you try having people join you to fix the puzzle. You'll find that people will want to help you place the pieces. Now that can be very helpful because everyone has a different perspective on things. It could be a wonderful family project because basically you'll find it fun and be pumped to help out every now and again. Once you have finally finished assembling the puzzle, you'll need to glue it together so you can hang it on the wall. Now I'm going to run down the procedures for doing just that. Number one, you will need a bottle of just plain ordinary Elmer's glue a sheet of cardboard or poster board, 
and a frame about the same dimensions as the puzzle. Spread a thin layer of ordinary Elmer's glue over the entire top of your puzzle. Now this is the important part. Let it dry for at least 24 hours and then add a second thin layer of glue. You'll want to give that second layer about two days to dry and set. You will then turn the puzzle over and follow the same procedure for the back. Number two. Once your finished puzzle is dry, glue the cardboard to the back and let that dry for another day or two. Number three. To mount it in the frame, place the frame face down and slide your puzzle into place. Use picture tacks from your local craft store to hold it in place and turn it over. Spread a third layer of glue over the top and let it dry thoroughly. Number four. The glue will dry to a glossy finish, but if you prefer, you can also add a layer of decoupage glue for extra shine. If your cardboard or poster board has a little strip showing around the edges, it's no problem. You can simply cover it up by gluing a number of things to the cardboard. Uh, you can use lace, glitter, ribbon, and even automotive racing stripe tape if you wish. There are just so many things you can do with your finished jigsaw puzzle. Be reactive and remember, it's your art. And as long as you like it, it does not really matter what anyone else thinks. Okay, now I want to kind of switch gears here and talk about uh, the uh, Mahjong brain game. Mahjong brain games, okay? Towards the end of World War I, an American business owner named Joseph Babcock modified an existing 19th century Chinese game. The game came to be known as Mahjong. Mahjong is a very fun and challenging puzzle game the American and his friends in Shanghai played to pass the time. Now, when he stumbled on the original game while in China, Mr. Babcock decided Americans would really like the game. But he felt it would be just too difficult as it was in its original format. So what he did was simplify the rules of the game, and he was right. Americans fell heads over heels in love with it. In its original format, the Chinese game was known by several different names, depending on the region and dialect. But the one that's known best roughly translates to Game of the Four Winds. One of the most enduring rumor uh, about the game has it that Mr. Babcock named his new game after the bird on one of the tiles, which represents a mythical figure named Mahjong. This basically means bird of a thousand intelligences. There are many variations of Mahjong, but they are basically played the same or nearly the same way. You have several tiles laid out on a table, which usually consists of the following categories or suits. Circles, numbered 1 to 9. Chinese characters, numbered 1 to 9. Flowers, mum, plum, bamboo, and orchid. Seasons, spring, summer, winter, and autumn. And the four winds, north, south, east, and west. Bamboo, numbered 1 to 9. And the bird of a thousand intelligences and dragons. In some cases, the suits are different, but the basic concept is the same for all. The numbers are only for more convenient matching unless you are playing a scored variation of the game. The tiles are randomly arranged in a layout of your choosing at the beginning of the game. The number of tiles in the layout can vary from version to version. The object of the game is to clear the tiles by matching two identical tiles until there are no remaining moves left. Each pair is removed from the layout. Tiles must have an open side to be removed and must not be under another tile either. You keep matching pairs until no more pairs are available to match. In some variations, you then shuffle the remaining tiles, placing them randomly in the last positions they occupied, and continue until you have removed all the pairs or there are no more moves left. In other variations, once you get to the point that there are pairs that are no more available, the game is over and you begin again. The basic rules are that numbered tiles can only be matched in the same suit. For instance, a nine of circles can only be matched to another nine of circles, but not to a nine of bamboo. Compass directions can only be matched against the exact same direction, such as uh, north with north or south with south. Dragons must be in the same color. In a case of flowers and seasons, any flower can be matched with another, and any season can be matched with another. Now, although Mahjong is typically a one-player game, there are variations which can be played by two or more players. Nowadays, people generally play Mahjong on their computers or the internet, but it is still played the old-fashioned way with tiles on a table as well. It is played just for fun and relaxation. There are 
Also, tournaments. Game and software developers invent new variations all the time. People are playing both alone and against one another on the internet every day, and you know it is a game enjoyed by the young and the old. Mahjong is timeless and remains one of the most popular puzzle games of our time. Well, my friend, we have come to the end of today's episode. I want to thank you for listening to the Teacher Rockstar podcast. I'm your host, Steve Hiles, and we hope you enjoy today's topic on Jigsaw Brain Games. Also, friend, if there is a topic that you would like to hear about on the show, please shoot me an email. I'd be really quite interested in that. Okay, so when you get a moment, visit my new and improved blog and subscribe to my newsletter for the latest educational research, best practices, and unadvertised free bonuses. Go to blog.teacherclassroomresources.com. And don't forget to subscribe to us at the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. And if you'd like to support us, please feel free to share our podcast with others. Post about it on social media or leave a rating and review. That's always greatly appreciated. Thanks again, and we'll see you same time, same place next week. And remember, my friend, you got this.